Welcome back to another thrilling adventure in VR game dev. When we left our last episode, our stalwart heroes had discovered that their approach to network physics had too many limitations to the handling of objects, and devised a plan to reapproach the structuring to only have server-side object interaction. This was a lot of work, and ultimately it failed. I couldn't get the transferal of inputs to function quite rightly, uh, as I had to do a lot of chopping of the scripts to ensure that they only ran locally where needed, and communicated with each other without crossing wires, and it was really all just a big mess. But then, a spark of fresh light. A user commented on the previous video with some insight into multiplayer for auto hand, and with it I was able to revisit my previous method and make some adjustments. So thanks to this anonymous user, uh, that I'll call Mr S, I was able to continue on with the original approach, with surprisingly smooth results. The trick was to not only switch the ownership of the object when picked up, but to switch its layer for everyone but the owner. To understand why this works, we have to look at how the avatar was approached. In my system, I'm using two rigs per player. The first rig is the local XR rig. This is directly controlled to, by the tracked inputs of the player, and it isn't networked. The second rig is the ghost or avatar rig. This is the mesh and collider set that is used to display the character to all other connections on the network. For the local client, the mesh and collider components are switched off, leaving only the transform which is networked. These transforms also follow the tracked input of the local rig to determine their position. When picking up an object locally, the object runs several scripts that prevent the physics calculations from interfering with the hold, but on all of the observers, these scripts don't initiate, and thus every observer is running physics calculations between the object and the avatar rig's colliders. The quick solution to this was to adjust the layer of the object on all observer machines to a separate layer that doesn't collide with the avatar hands. This cut out the interference with the object and led to much smoother movement across the network. So now after solving that issue, I've moved on to work with the Mali system. I've implemented a physics-based Mali system that utilizes velocity and collision values to determine damage to areas, and includes limiting factors such as armor and shields. Swinging weapons at specific objects can damage them now. Yay! So after that was working, I started learning how to add in various objects and how the advanced pose system works. The tutorial video was out of date, so it took me a while to figure it out, but when I discovered the pose tool gizmo, it drastically improved the time it took to start fleshing out the weapons of the world. So for the next step, other than setting up some fancy URP shader effects to emphasize emission values, will be to start implementing range attacks across the network. I'm hoping that with the current setup, that won't take me more than a few nights after work. So I hope to see you in the next video by the end of the week.